Item Number SCP-963 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-963-1 is to be given into the care of a current D-level operative, as well as personnel classified as Dr. Bright's assistant. This assistant is to be chosen by O5 for loyalty to the Foundation as well as psychological stability. SCP-963-1 is now hung by a chain from subject's neck. 963-1 is not allowed to be hidden upon the subject's body. Any attempt to do so will be met with lethal force. By order of O5, anybody SCP-963-1 is installed upon is given a stay of execution until it passes on of natural causes, or 963-1 is transferred to a new host. Uh, following information has been rescinded by O5-6, O5-8, O5-9. Description. SCP-963-1 is an ornate amulet approximately 15 cm in circumference, made from white gold, with 13 carat brilliant cut diamonds surrounding a carat oval cut ruby in a starburst pattern. It was discovered in the personal effects of who had been found dead by apparent suicide, surrounded by a number of supernaturally related books. Our agent in the area found that SCP-963-1 was incapable of being damaged and brought it in accordance to Protocol XLR-8R- Dr. Jack Bright, a junior staff researcher of good standing, was assigned the responsibility of researching SCP-963-1's capabilities and granted access to Later that year, SCP-076 -2, broke containment. See document 076-2-19A, leading to deaths and casualties. Dr. Bright was transporting SCP-963-1 by hand past SCP-076-2's containment unit and was among the first KIB killed in breach. Approximately days later, D-1 -113, tasked to clear the area of rubble, discovered SCP-963-1 among the wreckage and picked it up. An immediate, noticeable change came over D-1-113. Interview follows. Interview Log X Date Could you please tell me your name? D-1-113 says, It's Jack Bright. You damn know well it is. I believe you are Tom Higley, working for us as part of your life sentence. Don't be ridiculous. I couldn't possibly be. SCP-963-1 is removed at this time from D-1-113's possession. A further MRI shows that D-1-113 ceases all higher brain functions. 963-1 is returned, upon which brain function returns. Dr. Bright? What? We appear to have a problem. After much experimentation, it has been discovered that when any living anthropoid comes into direct skin contact with SCP-963-1, the mind of the subject is wiped, and that of Dr. Bright is projected from SCP-963-1 onto the subject. It is known that memories native to Dr. Bright transfer from host to host. If a subject maintains contact for 30 days, their brain functions become a duplicate of the late Dr. Bright's. If 963-1 is removed after this time period, the subject retains an independent copy of the consciousness of Dr. Bright. Sanctions were put in place to prevent multiple instances of Dr. Bright from being created to prevent Dr. Bright from collaborating with himself. However, it was found that this was not necessary, as Dr. Bright has proven thoroughly dedicated to the Foundation and to its cause. Dr. Bright himself has performed extensive experimentation on SCP-963-1 with the expressed desire for release from it. Interviews with Dr. Bright indicate that he killed himself in the process of empowering SCP-963-1 and was therefore never able to slave his own consciousness to the amulet. Dr. Bright hypothesizes that he accidentally activated 963-1's power by being killed instead of killing himself as the original creator had done. Entry regarding SCP-963-2 on Orders were given by O5-9 to attempt to replicate SCP-963-1. All attempts 
were met with failure until SCP-963-2, at which point all information regarding SCP-963-2 is classified level 5. Anybody attempting to access further information about SCP-963-2 without level 5 clearance will be terminated.